This is One on One. There he is, Dr. Matthew Jones, chairperson, Department of Communication at uh, County College of Morris. Good to see you, Matt. Good to see you too, Steve. Uh, Matt, you and I are aficionados, students of the world of communication and why mm -hmm. it's so complicated and fascinating. Uh, talk to us about a shift that was made organizationally at County College of Morris as it has to do with communication and what its implications, more importantly, are for the students. Sure. Um, we started this past uh, August, so we're a year into this project, um, of having created a Department of Communications at the County College of Morris. Uh, we came out of the English and Philosophy Department. Uh, our communication and our journalism major came out of the English and Philosophy Department. And we also brought along with us broadcasting from the Information Technology Department. Uh, I think uh, our faculty work very well together, uh, Michelle Alt Altieri, uh, David Pallant, uh, Ray Kalis, myself, and our new administrative assistant, uh, Lindsey King. Um, so what we felt actually was that broadcasting, communication, and journalism uh, really belong under one umbrella. Do we? Uh, Do we? I mean, it's interesting, our, our, our world mm -hmm. of broadcasting and communications, I mean, you know that we've talked about this. I mean, I teach in the field, mm -hmm. and, and I'll talk to students and ask, you know, why do you want to go into broadcasting? I want to be on TV. Right. Really? Is that what you want to do? Mm -hmm. Well, you better rethink it because communication, broadcasting, and media is a lot more than TV, right? Sure, of course. What is it? Um, well, one of our new uh, faculty members, uh, John Soltis, um, who teaches journalism, uh, he brings with him the idea of uh, backpack journalism or mobile journalism. And this is where uh, the student not only has to be proficient in writing, but also has to be proficient in uh, video editing, also has to be proficient in audio recording, also has to be uh, proficient in photo aesthetics and things like that. And so I think that's um, journalism having gone through a period of transition. That's where we stand right now in terms of creating a context where students can acquire multiple proficiencies and bring them to bear on any given task. And uh, it changes the yeah. curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that versatility in the communication curriculum, in the journalism curriculum, in the broadcasting curriculum uh, is essential. And that, that versatility, in my experience, uh, what I've learned over the past year, is that it comes from interdisciplinarity. So you have to be able to be interdisciplinary. You have to talk to your colleagues who are um, in the liberal arts, for example, in the humanities, uh, in, uh, in art, uh, and, um, you know, recently, this past uh, year, I worked uh, with one of our faculty members at CCM, Jefferson uh, Cartano, uh, from the engineering department, and Maureen Sutton from the business department. Um, and it was, it was my role to help in their interdisciplinary collaboration between engineering and business. So you had one team that was dedicated to creating a project or solving a problem, and another team that was dedicated to marketing it. And it was my job um, and several of my colleagues who teach in speech, our job to come in and to uh, talk about how to present uh, to the marketing students and the engineering students because as well. Because they don't have that skill set. Right, because they're not used to, you know, if you have a great idea, uh, very often, especially in the competitive engineering uh, marketplace that, that we're in today, you, you could have a great idea, but if you can't communicate it effectively, sometimes it's hard to uh, present it to non-experts. But that is not just true. Obviously, we know that's not just true in engineering. It's, in, sure. it's true in, in the legal field. It's true in the accounting field. It's true in the banking field. It's true in the medical field. That's mm -hmm. why there are so many in the healthcare field who try to talk about what's going on yep. in healthcare, and they're talking about it in code with jargon and acronyms and no one understands. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Right. You have to communicate not for yourself, but communicate for the others who are not understanding. And they're like, what? I don't understand. And I will say, exactly, that's the problem. And so even though there's all this new technology, and even though information is instantaneously accessible to us, it has virtually nothing to do. In fact, in fact I know there's a question here, I promise. It may, in fact, make it harder for many of us to be more effective yeah. communicators because we're convinced if there's so much information out there, everybody must know. Of course. Not true. Of course. Um, yes, I, th I think that you're absolutely right on that point, that very often media can serve as much as a, a barrier to communication as it can a facilitator to communication. I'll tell a, sto a story real quick. I was on um, a New, Jer New Jersey transit bus once, and uh, there was uh, the conductor uh, was using the PA system, which very loud and scratchy. A very, very clear sound, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to get people to stand back from the door. And... Um, 
uh, they wouldn't do it. And so rather than simply, it was only a few feet away, rather than simply walking over. And I, I understand the apprehension, and, and I probably in some ways would have had the same uh, tendency. <laughs> um, but it was a way of using communication or using technology as a barrier rather than uh, as a facilitator of communication. Let's just talk through communication. Because if we speak through communication, I will have been able to say that I use the technology to communicate with you. But the reality is this. I'm not real confident that the message I tried to send you was the message you received. Mm -hmm. But I could say I used it. Sure. But it would have made a lot more sense to simply be 10 feet away from you and grab a, hey, listen, the sure. platform's over here. Yeah. Technology isn't always a right. better way to communicate, right. to communicate. Sure. I mean, I think one of the things that, um, you know, you as a communication scholar yourself, we, we you know, are probably familiar with the work of Marshall McLuhan. Yep. One of his most famous aphorisms. Is the medium the message? The medium is, is the, the medium sure. the message? Sure. I mean, that's one of the points I think that's, uh, that's really pertinent to what, to what we're talking about here, which is anytime you introduce a new medium of communication, you're introducing a whole different set of complications. Excuse a whole me, different isn't that set why, of problems. sorry for interrupting, isn't that why you have a course that teaches students, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, aesthetics, I think. Media uh, aesthetics, Media yes. aesthetics. You mm -hmm. teach students how to watch TV and help them understand how they could be manipulated. Sure, I taught that for one semester. Our faculty member, Ray Kalis, uh, teaches that. Um, and it absolutely is, is the case is that, that you know, what he's focusing on are the, are the factors or vectors that uh, rally the audience's attention um, and, and, and gain or detach example, them from their engagement. Uh, for example, why, um, in terms of composition, would you place an object or an actor or a person in one part of the screen rather than another? Uh, what role does camera movement play? What role does depth of field play in, um, uh, you know, in, in crafting the message? Or like, or like the Kardashians. That's real, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I had to do that. I'm sorry. You love what you do. I do. Because? Um, because it allows me to connect with people. And I think that uh, for myself, that's not uh, something that comes easy to me. And I think. Um, Seems uh, like it here. Well, that's, that's, that's my practice persona. But I think at the same time, um, you know, I, I, it's become real. You know, there's, there's this old adage that uh, be careful what you practice uh, because eventually you become, you become that thing. And, and I think that, um, you know, it's, it's through understanding uh, communication processes analytically and inter interpersonal and mediated processes analytically that I have come to feel more comfortable doing this. And that's what I want to share with students. Um, the idea that seconds, theory, theory can inform practice. And the more we understand the processes of communication analytically, media analytically, the better we become as communicators and we, the better we can tell our stories. And being able to tell stories is critical. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, New Jersey Natural Gas, Celgene Corporation, the law firm of Gibbons PC, New Jersey Sharing Network, Josh S. Weston, and by Choose New Jersey. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by Commerce Magazine. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.